Hey everybody, hello Movie Bunch and welcome to Movie Couple Live where we talk about the latest in pop culture and entertainment and we are with our special awesome friend Mark Beauty Riley. Hi guys, happy Saturday. Happy Saturday. Hey, this it's October awesome. 3rd, Day. It, oh. It's it's October what? It's I thought it was October. Christmas. It's Wait, hold on. Honestly. Oh, hold on. Oh, we got- gonna, I don't have a I'm watch. This is just a. Uh, this is just a brace. I don't know what time it is. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's so hard. Everything blends into each other. So it much. really does. It, it really does. So what? October. October. Apparently maybe we're getting audio. I'm going to check really quickly. I don't think we're having audio awesome issues. Friend, oh, oh boy, we sound really deep. So <laughs> hang on two seconds. I will fix that. Oop, I can't hear you now. Did we come? We're back. Oh, there you are. We are back. Okay. Sometimes we sound like we are on helium, and sometimes we sound like we're like, what's the opposite of that chemical? Uh, technically, it's called hydrochloroform. Hydrochloros. It's, Hydrochloroform. It's, it's, it's another kind. It's a. It's another <laughs> gas that makes when you have um, um, vibrations go through, through it slower, so it like oh. lowers your voice. So it does the exact opposite of helium. Oh my God. So it was a party and we didn't even know it. Like everybody's like, everybody. Yeah. I think it was just us. But kind of okay. Fun. Okay. So we fixed it. We are all good. So, Riley, welcome to our crazy uh, live stream show where we get to catch up with you and what you've yeah. been. We don't know who Mark Riley is. I got to put up this banner. Uh, you can follow Riley everywhere at just Riley around Instagram and Twitter. Uh, one of the best guys uh, I know. Oh, thanks. <laughs> uh, we have a shared love of dogs, of Star do. Wars, and of horror. So, Riley, like I literally, I was just talking to one of our movie bunches yesterday, mm-hmm. that, and literally have not really caught up with you uh, since the beginning of this year. So, how the heck have you been doing? Well, I mean, you know, I'm supposed to get married today, so that's <laughs> exciting. Um, <laughs> so today Wait. is officially, and Wendy, you were so funny when you, when we were scheduling this, you're like, "Wait, I have this as your wedding day," and I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." So we had to move <laughs> the wedding again for the second time, and we're going all the way to next year. We don't even know yet. We're just kind of holding off on. On um, things, so that's okay. We have our health. We have each other. We um, we moved into a great new place. Um, we're 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 hanging in there. You know, it's a little bit you know tough. The 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 thing with COVID is tough, and it's uh it's caused me and my fiance to have to really tighten the belt because, you know, unfortunately the bankruptcy has hit um her side of things. So you know she's in the uh, healthcare industry, yoga, and that's uh well. They're not opening yoga studios much nowadays. So unfortunately we have to, um, you know, we're figuring it out. But meantime, Julie and I hang out all the time on our Twitch channel, my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash Mark Riley. We play video games and just have fun. And we open some wine and we just get just dumb and have fun. (laughs) And, and meantime, I'm on my YouTube channel as well. And I, you know, I had Clark Wolf over, um, on my YouTube show on Thursday and, and, um, you know, I had my friend Eric over on uh, Riley's Cantina on Monday, so I'm I'm doing I'm doing okay and building something on the side, you know that I, I can't wait to announce um in about a month or so, and then uh you know and I'm rocking right. my Patreon, so it's, yes. it's I'm hanging in there and I, I'm very very lucky and I'm very very happy that I have my health and all that good stuff and that I have my dog Leia. Yeah. <laughs> I do have to admit yeah. that one silver lining that has come out of the pandemic is all of those other little things that you've been wanting to do for so long. You're like, oh, you know, sooner or later, I'll get around to working on my YouTube channel. Oh, sooner or later, I'm going to work on this on my live stream. Finally, right. gotten to the point to where like, why not do it now? I mean, well, yeah, we really started picking up on a lot of our um, work that we've been wanting to do forever on our YouTube channel and our live yeah. stream. Yeah. It, it's well, as you know, Wendy, I mean, we had it, we, it, it, it sucked around January 2nd for me when I had to say goodbye to Collider. Oh, I remember. And, um, it was hard leaving you guys and, um, you know, it, so this is what I did. 
Do you know? And it was very, I was very lucky to have that and uh, to have the support of, of so many people. Um, and so I've been just trying to grow it for the past 10 months now and do in some other things, but yeah, but when you can focus on like right now, you guys, I mean, I can't imagine what, uh, how, how are you guys? <laughs> How's everything with the pandemic on your end? Well, uh, yeah. It, cheers. <laughs> it was like the beginning of August when I found out that I then that I no longer cheers everybody. This is my failed Dalgona <laughs> slash matcha coffee. Nice. I mean, it tastes fine. It just looks not good. But I was at the beginning of August where uh, I no longer had a job, and I was like, oh, okay, here we go. We're gonna really do this. Dive into this YouTube thing. It's not like I haven't applied for jobs. There's there's been a many, and there's been a many auditions. But it's also we're still in the pandemic, so yeah. you know, even if you're on a veil for something, they tell you, well, we uh, can't shoot right now, so uh, stay put. Stay put. Yeah. And you just don't hear anything, and you're like, what's happening? Yeah, it's right. You just, tr I mean, you try to pick up any little breadcrumbs that you can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, gigs here, little things there, like, okay, this is something that I can do from home. Um, so you're just trying to pick up pretty much anything that you can and start. Luckily for Wendy and I, uh, one of the things that we did at the very beginning was just make huge cuts to our expenditures. And two of those things happened automatically, which is driving. So we're not spending any money on gas. Right. And yeah. That's a going out very true. Yeah, yeah, we, we obviously you can't really, yeah. And but I started noticing it did exactly what you guys are doing, and then I'm like, yeah, we're still still feeling it, you know. It's like, oh yeah, it's all that takeout I'm getting, you dummy. <laughs> Sorry, like, me. <laughs> oh yeah, no, and and it's like I'm just like, it's it, you know, it became a thing for a little bit as we were getting our pandemic legs under us, yeah. um, because it, it, it's a big, we're still, you know, it's still it's still going. Mm -hmm. We're still, we still have to be careful. We still have to, you know, watch what's going on. And, 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 you know, here we are. Thankfully there, there are, there are video games like Star Wars squadrons that is just yeah. awesome. <laughs> yeah. So speaking of Star Wars and of course, everybody yeah. watch Riley play squadron, Riley and Julie, and maybe Leia sometimes yeah. <laughs> with wine, uh, not Leia with the wine, the humans with the wine. <laughs> humans with the wine. We've tried to give it to Leia. That's what makes her do her face. She goes, <laughs> she doesn't like the smell of red wine. It's oh, hysterical. It's hysterical. Wine. Was that white wine? I don't know if she likes that or not. We don't drink that. Let her have a <laughs> sniff and see if she likes. Oh, <laughs> I'm kidding. We we drink it every once in a while, but I think in general she's just like if we if we have a big glass and we put it near her, she's like, I don't know what you're doing. Get the hell out! <laughs> I don't like it. I don't, I don't really like hysterical. It. That's amazing. But speaking of uh, all the uh, all the awesome things you're doing on your channel, you have. Riley's Cantina. What is mm. Riley's Cantina? Well, that yeah, that's my Star Wars show, and that's um, that's what I do every Monday around five or six, depending on my my guests. And it's my Star Wars celebration. I mean, that's when I thought about it. When I when you know when Collider stopped happening, I was like, all right, I like Star Wars. I want to talk Star Wars. Mm -hmm. I like wine. Okay, I'm gonna open wine and talk Star Wars. And right when we started, it was fucking great. Oh shoot, ah. can I hear it? I'm okay, sorry. Okay. Um, and, and I, you know, it, it was before the pandemic. So it was really nice to have people over to my little cantina and pop some wine and have some star Wars conversations. And then, you know, the pandemic happened and yeah. here we are, but you know, Riley's cantina I was very lucky to have Sean Healy presents approach me and want to do this now live show that I'm doing with Ken Knapsack, um, because of the great fans, um, because of, you know, the, the idea of just getting finally out, you know, where we can go out and we're going to go to the El Cid. It's a nice bar restaurant in LA. It's on October 10th. And me and Ken are going to do a live show and it's a live stream where you guys don't even have to leave, but people will be, yep, just there it is. You know, <laughs> so we're going to talk about all the good Star Wars stuff. It's going to be a comedy show as well. We're going to have a lot of special guests. Haven't even announced all of them yet, um, which I'm planning on doing on Monday. It's going to be kind of ridiculous. I um, mean, but right now we have a special appearance by Nathan Hamill. We have a special appearance by my friend Eric Bass, who is the bass player of Shinedown, the band. He's going to do something. Uh, Andy Merriweather, my friend Andy Merriweather, is going to play some great music. And then me and Ken and Get more. <laughs> and people we can't talk about yet. <laughs> and people we can't talk about yet, but it's going to be awesome. I mean, um, oh, and Joseph Scrimshaw. We uh, we announced Joseph Scrimshaw is, of course, going to be a part. The great Joseph Scrimshaw from Force Center. A lot of good Star Wars stuff. We didn't get a celebration. 
the no. con, you know, it's like, so we are going to do something really, 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 really fun for you guys. We have our own Star Wars celebration. <laughs> You're damn right we are. That's got to be something else that's really interesting to be able to be like, to go to these bars that are just like, we're, not, we're obviously not doing anything. Yeah, we'll love to have someone be able to come in and kind of promote our establishment and also to be able to bring in just some kind of acknowledgement that, hey, we're still here. It, 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 exactly. And I think, you know, we're working in conjunction with El Cid and, and, you know, small production crew, um, you know, the Christian Ruvacaba is producing this. Yeah. Me, so, and Cody yeah. Hall, you know, and, and, and Brian, the, the wangers. So we're able to go in there and we're, we're able to be safe, be, you know, make sure we, our masks are going to be on. And then we're going to do a fun show where, you know, we'll be socially distanced, but you'll get to see us and we'll be out yeah. in the world you guys can all be safe. You can be on your tauntaun or your <laughs> rank or if that's your thing, you yeah. know, um, you know, or your couch or your millennium Falcon, whatever you want to call it. And you can watch us from home and it's going to be really fun. And the link is 48 hours long. So you don't have to catch it live. You can just hang out and see it later. If you so desire. Amazing. Or do like a rewatch. They're like, you know, I really, or enjoy we watch it again. Yeah. yeah. I'm trying to get my dad to do that. He got it. He got a shirt there. You can get a, a VIP where you can do, yeah. Uh, a Q and A at the end, but you also get a shirt. And me and Ken are action figures right now on this shirt that we're selling. It's really kind of cool. My yes. dad, yes. yeah, right. My dad is really like absolutely impressed. Can't <laughs> wait to get the shirt. No <laughs> idea. Has no idea how to watch this thing. None whatsoever. You get the link when you buy the ticket, and then I told them this. You just I click on it and watch hilarious. it. I'm going to be giving oh. it to his wife, Adele, my stepmother. <laughs> Adele is. Adele and I are Facebook friends. That should tell you everything. She knows how to do these things. She's tech so, savvy. She's tech savvy, right? <laughs> so it's great. Yeah. So that's uh, that's Riley's Cantina in a nutshell, um, and all the with all the bells and whistles. I I love it. I love listening to you and Ken talk Thank Star you. Wars about nerd things. Uh, I am super excited to hear who you've already gotten that you just said. You know, with Joseph Grimshaw, and Nathan Hamill, and. Yeah. The Guests, and I can't wait to see who else is going to pop up. I have my own speculation, but I'm not going to say it out loud just in case. Because, you know, sometimes you put things on the Internet, even if it's pure speculation, people are like, that's a fact. They're going to run with it. Yeah. No, 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 no. I did not. They I got George Lucas. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right. And it's I, like, I no. wish we could. Right. I called George. 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 Yeah. George. Yeah. We're on a first name basis. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> and uh, he blocked me, though, after oh, I called. That's no. so <laughs> fine. <laughs> so that yeah so we're doing that i'm very excited about that i can't i can't wait so um I'm so thanks excited. for asking yeah hey so you guys make sure you check out uh the let me go ahead and put that poster back up really quickly the link to uh grab your ticket is ticketweb.com and uh i'm sure riley you have it's it it's on your social media as well right oh yeah it's pinned to my social media if you go to uh, at riley around on twitter you can find all those links and i'm tweeting about the damn thing every minute so you can see it yeah. um <laughs> it'll be really Next really fun Saturday on 10 10 day yeah a week from today a week from today i'm very excited i mean this is really something like i what ken and i are doing is ridiculous Look at I the promo it. we just did. If you like um, me and Ken, and if you like us being just funny and goofy, well, then there you go. That's it. It's everything yeah. I need. Everything we all need. Mm -hmm. There we go. Yeah. In this you world, hell talk, yeah. Talk a little Star Wars. Stay yeah. safe at home. Not have to worry about getting punched in the face by some random person walking down the street. What the hell was that? What was that? We have also a super chat from Marvin Martin to cue us in. Don't know how long I'll be here. Hope you're still here, Martin, because I know you said this in a while ago. So thank you for your super chat. But here's an awesome video uh, when talking about Rick Moranis. So we're going to talk about uh, Rick Moranis a little bit because why would anyone, anyone attack him? So this happened. I mean, he is 67 years old. He finally kind of made his first TV internet sort of debut ever, you know, since In he years. took a long, long hiatus to do a commercial with Ryan Reynolds. And he was attacked seemingly at random on the Upper East Side uh, this past Thursday, according to reports. And the surveillance camera caught the whole thing in action where this guy, he's in like a hoodie. It says, I love New York on it, which is kind of like a weird juxtaposition if you consider what the act he was doing. Just walked yeah. up to the guy and just punches him like in the head, knocks him to the ground. He had to go to the hospital. He's got pain in his head, in his hip, in his back. And he later went to the precinct to report the crime. Uh, so I don't know where we land with that, but Riley, what was your reaction when you first heard about this news? I mean, you don't do this to Rick Moranis, of all people. I, I just hate the, the 
I hate the the brutality of it that this guy didn't know it was Rick Moranis and that I don't know what if that's worse or or better or I don't know. Yeah. It's just it's just a it's a I, I think he saw a, a, a an older gentleman and and is a asshole, you know, yep. just a what a piece of you know what. Yep. And I think that that's that that this world that we're in right now, you don't need this. It's like this is I I pretty much end every video say be kind because I, I just want that. I just want it. I just, that's all I want. We're in a weird time right now. And so to yeah. see this and to know then because it is Rick Moranis, mm -hmm. it amplifies the hate so much that um, this guy is going to get caught and I, and I'm glad he, he will. And you know, if not, let's send Liam Neeson out for this guy <laughs> because his particular <laughs> set of skills. And then here's my dog coming in. I told you that Leia would make oh, Hi, Leia. Leia. Come on. She's like, oh, hey, Nan, Nan, you want to see Leia? Come yeah, on. She says she likes to come in and say hi when I'm, especially she has no idea when I'm live. And um, she's just like, she daddy, daddy, daddy. Oh, oh, she's my a God, licker. The, the kisses. She's, she's such a licker. Yeah. She's oh, uh, so cute. Give me that. Come Do on, you remember on. in the beginning when she was a much younger pup? She's oh, yeah. It's like oh, a dog show. It's yeah, the dog yeah. show. The it's human the dog show. Right, I'm sorry. She's probably going to hit my camera now, too. So, That's all good. Robbie does that on occasion, too. Yeah, right. <laughs> but do you remember the barricade you used to have to put with the chairs and, and the pillows to prevent her from crawling into certain areas into your home? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The barrier was ridiculous. The. <laughs> The walls, I'm, I'm surprised we actually got some of our deposit back. We actually did because she ate the walls. Um, and <laughs> She ate the walls. She ate the walls. So I came home one day from Collider. I would Sometimes I'd go home at work to, to walk her. Uh, to go home to work? That made zero sense. Go home at lunch to walk her. And um, yep. I, I would come in and then, like she would chew up all the molding around the corner. I'm like, ah! What did you do? What did you do? Why did you do that? That's the thing with puppies. I remember, yeah, we had um, a black lab. She, had, they had like a little tuxedo spot right on. Um, I think Leia has she, a little. Yeah, the, mm -hmm. Leia's got the tux kind yeah. of thing going too. And we had just got her from uh, like the vets because they had like a litter that was just dropped off in their dumpster. Oh. <gasps> um, and we had oh, come home one day. Puppies. Um, and what this, what um, her name was Ebony. She went through all of our backyard. Um, what is it like the Malibu lights? Oh, that were in there, awkward. dug up one of the wires, pulled up all of the wires and all of the Malibu and all of the Malibu lights. And we're coming home going, what did you do? Puppies, man, puppies. That's what they do. And mm -hmm. I'm, so, I'm now so impressed that Leia, we can leave her now. We don't need a barrier or anything. It's how incredible. How old is she now? One and a half, two. She's two. one. She is going on one year and 10 months. She's a new, oh. new Year's puppy. She's almost an adult. <laughs> She's almost an adult. So, yeah, and she has – well, I think also she has a, a separation anxiety. So she basically is that dog that when we leave, we put on the little puppy cam. She just sits by the door and stares at it. Oh. At the whole time? The whole time. Oh. She'll finally, she'll finally kind of roll over and go to sleep or she'll kind of – not the whole time. Yeah, she'll get back on the couch. So she's really good, though. She's a real good dog, except oh. what, except around night when she becomes a gremlin. Then yeah. it's you know, <laughs> yeah, she's crazy sometimes. <laughs> Daddy, oh, my. the babers, yeah. the babies, the babies. But look, Rick Moranis. It, it could have been anyone. In a it way, yeah. In a way I am with the the only benefit and i use that word very lightly that it was rick moranis is that i think it hopefully gained more traction on mm -hmm. just like random acts of hate why would you do this yeah. pandemic or not like this is just really awful so we all hope collectively because we love rick moranis and we would love to you know see him continue to maybe like start making his way back into film and television because i would love nothing more uh that he is feeling better and that they catch this guy yeah, yeah. The yeah. thing is, I highly doubt that they're going to catch him. I mean, there's really not much facial. Um, no, there's one with him. With the oh, map. they got yeah, they got him. They got a picture of him. So I, I, I think they'll find him. They'll find him. Yeah. Okay. They're, the the pictures I saw, you really couldn't tell very many details. Yeah, yeah, I saw reverse, but maybe that I don't know. You know, you got to make sure you're you're seeing things on the internet that are correct. Um, mm -hmm. so 
But I think you're kind of saying it, Wendy. I think um, I think the amplification of it because it was Rick Moranis. Yeah. Um, it'll you know hope. I hope they better I get hope. him. Like yeah. I said, otherwise Liam Neeson. Liam <laughs> yeah. Neeson. I think we'll it's find better him. hot than to have to deal with Liam Neeson. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, boy. <laughs> I think you don't want that. Yeah. Uh, and let's go ahead and pivot to happier news. Uh, let's talk about Cobra Kai. Yeah. Season four announced. I know you must be so happy because I know you're a big fan. So the show, ironically enough, started off on YouTube as a YouTube original and it right. got over like 55 million views for its first episode. We have season one and two that was on YouTube. And if you didn't have YouTube Red or YouTube Premium, then you had to like watch it really quickly within that seven day period, which you and I couldn't right. do. Nope. So we still haven't caught up, but that's okay because now it's on Netflix. Season three is premiering in January of 2021 and they just announced season four. Hell yeah. What are you guys' thoughts? Oh, are you kidding me? I mean, I remember I'm, I lose my mind over this thing. I, 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 I was lucky enough when we were at Collider, I got the seasons early so that we could review them. Mia Christian and Josh McCuga at the time. And then I think again, um, it's so awesome. And I love seeing it go to Netflix. Yeah. And everybody mm -hmm. start coming to me going, have you seen this Cobra Kai? I'm like, yeah, guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so long. I was way ahead of you, you know, on that one. No, I mean, it's Co Cobra Kai, Karate Kid. I grew up with it. It's, you know, it's my thing. I mean, I have a, I mean, I came out as a Karate Kid and one of the Schmodowns. I love the yeah, damn yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, we did. So. I, honestly, um, who would have ever thought that a YouTube original series based on the, like, many years later story of what happened to the people in Karate Kid was going to be such a huge success. When right. you sit down and you're like, what? They're going to be making this? Yeah. And then you saw the first episode. You're like, this is brilliant. Yeah. yeah. They, 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 they captured that nostalgia. Mm -hmm. You know? They, the they really did. They, they were still able to continue a new, interesting story, but still have the um, the things that grabbed you in the, in the first movie. Right. And I'm like, this is brilliant. How, and the, the fact that they were able to get um, everybody back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's incredible. I think it's a, it's, it's to the creators of it. I think they just got it and they, they, they know the, they know the story. They know how to, to, to give it that, that oomph that um, elevate it to caring about it. They reversed kind of the roles of Daniel and, um, and uh, Johnny, you yeah. know, kind of you, you, uh, Johnny's my favorite character. Yeah, I mean, he's my absolute favorite character. I kind of feel like he's the the guy that you're rooting for right now because he was so down on his luck. So I love that spin, and I love that it. it's gray. You know, you're going in there now, and John John um, uh, Daniel years later is you know still living by the words of Mr. Miyagi. It's just so great. Just go go see it. Netflix is awesome for doing this because they knew and they had a bigger audience. Yeah. And that's what it needed. It needed that audience. And I think because it was done so well, that audience came, looked and started telling everybody, have you seen this thing? <laughs> it's great. So. <laughs> it is kind of funny to sort of see the, the audience not really having had a chance to view it while they were on YouTube, because if you think about it, it's, and it's not that like YouTube premium is bad or anything like that. I'm not saying that at all, but I'm saying people pay for, Hulu, Disney Plus, Netflix, HBO, whatever, Amazon Studios, Prime. Right. And it's like, do I really need to add on another one? That was kind of our reasoning behind it is that we couldn't really afford, and this was pre pandemic, couldn't really oh, afford, yeah. add another, you know, that another streaming fee. service. Yeah. yeah. And plus, we also, it's like we already get a whole bunch of free stuff from YouTube. So I'll just satisfy, I mean, I'll just get my free stuff and I don't want to really pay extra money to see something that I'm like, uh, kind of excited about. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. It's, um, they, yeah. Red, that, I think YouTube red was really thinking that Cobra Kai would be the thing that could put them into the next level, mm -hmm. like a Hulu or something, but they didn't have enough, I think things to back it up then. I mean, I looked, I said, all right, do I do this new stream, uh, streaming service? I loved Cobra Kai. And there was a point I got the, I actually take that back. I had the first two episodes of, Cobra Kai season one. And so I got the, the trial and I watched all of the, the rest of the episodes. But yeah. then I looked ahead and I'm like, what else are you going to, you're going to have, what are you going to do? And I, nothing was kind of catching my attention. And then they canceled it. They said, Oh, we can't. And you know, then their model couldn't sustain it because I think it was 
doing well, but also the budget was probably going up. So yep. here comes Netflix. Netflix comes in like, we'll save it. And you know, that's also yeah. maybe like a new practice that they could do. Like the whole purpose of this is to like build up something that, hey, we can kind of build for cheap and then see once it gets to a point that we can't sustain it, see if we can sell it off to either HBO or to Netflix. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. unless you want to, they YouTube Red really wants to start building up their library. Yeah. Then they go. The thing is, though, then you need multiple projects going on. Exactly. As opposed to just hitting it with one. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Netflix really started. I mean, they put themselves on the map with Stranger Things. Truly, like that was when it was like what, <laughs> and and then they, you know, then they backed it up, you know, with other things that came out where you're like, like, I mean, I'm watching Ozark, you know, and you're like, whoa. Yeah. So you're, there's all these great, great shows out there that like are landing, whether it's at Hulu or, you know, like Handmaid's Tale is over at Hulu. So you're like, OK, I got, you know, you, th these shows that everybody's talking about. Disney Plus did it right with Mandalorian. And yeah. then, but you have to you have to make these shows good, too. You can't just, you know, make them just haphazardly. So that's why I think Disney Plus is now doing well and um, or. I mean, they were always going to do well. Come on. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Disney Plus did have a huge benefit. The fact that, okay, we can get, put out these one little like Mandalorian and then maybe a few little specials here and there. The inner, uh, what is it? The Imagineer story, I thought. Yeah, was yeah, that was great. Documentary. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, though, in between those, they can still keep you satisfied and coming back by having their old movies that, it, that all of the Disney library that they have, all of the, the um, cartoons, all of the old movies that you're like, wow, I haven't seen Gargoyles in. 20 years right. i need to go back and check that out yeah. oh absolutely that's the, that's the beauty i mean we so we went through i mean we watched probably cinderella lion king aladdin yeah. little mermaid mm -hmm. um jungle book uh <laughs> where else did i go bed knobs and broomsticks yes <laughs> yes those are some of the things that we watched that off the top of my head that we were watching like Right as it launched after the Mandalorian, of course, and then you know, revisiting some Star Wars and you know, that kind of stuff. And then yeah. Clone Wars, we got that new season of Clone Wars that came out, yeah. That I was oh, I so love those last four, so good. they were so good, yeah, good. crushing yeah. it on the, with the Star Wars front. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, so uh, I'm, I'm enjoying the hell out of Star Wars lately. We have some good stuff, and we're in a, I, I think now, riding the ship of some of the divisiveness online yes um that we're in a we're in a positive kind of you know we don't know what the movies are, are, are going to be just yet but we have mandalorian and i, I see yeah. a lot of uh, people in here um speculating on mandalorian season two in a good way so that's so it's like good good okay side note yes. something that i kind of want to talk about because there's not much word out there mm. but you probably know a lot more about it is what they're planning on doing for the High Republic. Now, High Republic is only like 200 years in the past, right? I think. Yeah, is that it? Yeah, I'm not, I mean, I'm a little so, up on it. I'm going to buy the book um, when it finally comes. It, it might be coming out soon or it might be out. I can't remember. I need to catch up on it, though. So I think 200. Wait, is it 200? Yeah, because. 500. Well, even 500, Yoda should still be around. Yoda and is around. Jedi. Something that I was oh. interested in because they brought out that new lightsaber. That had mm. the, um, did you see, did you the see side it? guards that come out. Yeah, it looked rad. It looks Loved amazing. It. Yeah. But there's something that I was watching a video on that was talking about the reason why the guard was such a big deal in the old Republic was because they were still fighting Sith. So you still had lightsaber on lightsaber fighting. Yeah. However, having that guard in this time period doesn't really fit because at this time, oh. there are no Sith, there are no wars. Well, because what oh, is, is that right? Oh, yeah, I guess there are no Sith back in at that moment because they got rule of two. Well, well, they I don't know. I mean, it's like because they fudged some of the canon with Darth Bane and Old Republic ah, stuff. Yeah. Darth Bane was the one that created the rule of two. We, you know, in fact, I want to say that that could be the way the High Republic kind of gives us some old Republic flavor, meaning the rule of two and the Sith, they could introduce the Sith in this area. I don't know though. They, um, from what I understand, I mean, it's the Sith are a little bit in the shadows of, of the canon at the moment, no pun intended, but <laughs> it's like, I think we have to like, so maybe that's what you're, but what you're referring to. And, I, um, but I, I, I don't know. 
Wow. Well, in Phantom Menace, there's two lines that really throw a wrench into what they can do in High Republic. Mm -hmm. One is what they say on Naboo. There hasn't been a war in a thousand years. So promoting the how, how peaceful the High Republic was. And they also said, uh, Kiaramundi said, um, the Sith have been gone. The Sith have been extinct, extinct for a millennium. A millennia. A millennia, so, yeah. So that means I'm like, wow, what, what are they going to do? In this high republic, I mean, yeah, you're you right. Talk about right. Mandalorian wars because that's not really a war, it's more of a what is it, a warlord struggle kind of a thing. Someone right. that's trying to take over power, and there, but that's interesting. So, you the, you might have landed on it because we're gonna get some, we're getting some flavor right now with um Mandalorian season two. That great trailer was like referencing the war between these sorcerers yeah. known as the Jedi and. So that's interesting there that 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 could be some stuff that they start throwing out there in Mandalorian season two mm -hmm. that, you know, Disney being, you know, own, the owner of, you know, everything <laughs> um, will then maybe corporate synergy have that appear in the new uh, the High Republic. Yeah. But yeah, I'm a little confused by it, too, because it's it's so it, it wholly exists right now in the books and on that side of things. Yeah. And I've been but in, I think it's been across the board for me uh, for me, unfortunately, is that there's a lot of news that goes out there that I'm like, yeah, we'll see. Yep. Yeah. We'll see when it comes to movies um, thing. And it's it just is kind of a thing where. The other thing I've been doing a lot is writing. I've been writing a, a, a lot of things lately. So it's like kind of like looking into that and less hearing about High Republic. But the lightsaber looked awesome. I the think it looked cool. I was like, that is so cool. Because it's going to look so cool when it activates too. Because yeah. it's like, and then that effect of throwing it out. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. I wonder where they'll go with that. If they'll set some movies back then. Or if they'll, if they, if they really are wanting to start a new kind of area saga if you will i just i don't think you can do it without the sith so i hope that the high republic i don't know where the, the it's going to land as far as canon so we'll see maybe you have to deal with jedi who are turning mm -hmm. to the dark side and then they have to fight them could be you yeah. never know yeah and what's like my favorite thing about this all coming out is that so much already kind of it exists in the books but it doesn't exist on quote unquote, the television universe or the cinematic universe. And that's when they can really play with it and introduce the people who like us, we haven't read those books yet. Uh, and that's okay because like when they introduce it to us, that's when I tend to want to go and pick up the book and then go down that whole rabbit hole. But what we do right. know is coming is Mandalorian season two and uh, movie bunch. Debbie has a really great question. Hey, uh, the movie couple and Riley, how excited are you for Mandalorian season two? And how do you think we'll see the rebels characters? Because personally, I'm not sure they're a big part of the season. Great question, Debbie. Uh, yeah, I don't think they are either. Um, I think they, I think they're really trying to set up a backdoor pilot for the live action rebels where they all get back together. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I think that's where they're going. And Ahsoka is going to be the, the key to that. And yeah. I think maybe there might be a handoff with the child. I don't know. You know, we, we could see that or it, but I, I think we'll get Ahsoka. I think, I think there are rumors. I don't know how legit it is that, you know, an older Ezra is going to show up and, mm -hmm. you know, everybody's talking online. I, I, but I don't know. This is about the Mandalorian. So, you know, as much as I want them to come in there, I think it's, but, but the good news is I do believe mm -hmm. they are going to appear. It could be towards the end of the season. And if it does very, very well, however, the story connects, we could get, we could see them go off and we're getting the live action rebels. I mean, yeah. I think that would be incredible. Ahsoka, Ezra, um, and uh, Rex. I mean, oh, Tamura awesome. Morrison is there. He's going to be playing Boba Fett. Yep. But I think he's also playing Rex. I think he's going to play, you know, I think yeah. he's doing both. I no, mean, it's, it's, it's in, and because I think all of this is happening is because uh, John Favreau and Dave Filoni are, are kind of doing their thing. And they, they are telling stories that inspired star Wars, not stories that were inspired by star Wars. Does that make sense? So they're like, yeah. they even said it in the Mandalorian documentaries they're going it's like well what inspired star wars the spaghetti westerns the uh, you know the the flash gordon serials and they're looking at that template and i feel like that's why it's really working and they're just putting it in the star wars universe which we love so yeah, yeah. and that's a great path to take i personally think is going yeah. on inspiration that inspired 
Star Wars, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The, the what is it? Uh, the, um, the samurai movies. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. The yep. breakdown that they did in that documentary. I loved the, the behind the just the nerdiness that came out and it was just making me salivate kind of thing. Yeah. Like, oh, so cool. You hit it. And who was in that? That was Deborah Chow was in that. She's the director of Obi-Wan. Obi-Wan mm -hmm. Ronin, Wandering Samurai. Come on. Yes. It's I all love. right there. That's what, you know, with a dark past and him freaking out over Vader and hearing, you know, Liam Neeson. I, I brought it up. Yep. <laughs> Qui-Gon Jinn will probably be talking to Obi-Wan Kenobi. So there's some very, not just Mandalorian, exciting things I think happening in, um, in the Disney series. Yeah, oh, man. especially like in that episode of Clone Wars where they had Liam Neeson guest appearance and they actually had his voice. It was so cool to hear his to hear Qui Gon again. To be oh, able yeah. to hear Qui Gon's voice talking to Obi Wan again is just so exciting. Wouldn't it be amazing to see Force Ghost Qui Gon talking to Obi Wan? Oh, like, come on. Yes. And since we're taking a little bit of a walk down memory lane, uh, let's go ahead and go to this question from Jack Robbins, who writes for Riley. What is his most memorable moments of the of the Skywalker saga and the Clone Wars? Oh my God, from the Skywalker saga? That's a lot. You can you. I mean, you. Can I mean, I mean, my favorite moments from the Skywalker saga are uh, in no particular. Well, maybe in order. I mean, I love the duel on Bespin in Empire Strikes Back. Yoda pulling out the the X wing gives me chills. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of it comes from Empire. Um, the reveal of Leia as his sister when he finds yeah. out on Dagobah and Return of the Jedi brings yeah. tears to my eyes. Um, with, that he does tap into the dark side at the end of Return of the Jedi, that duel with John Williams' music where he says, Leia, no! And the, you know, Vader gets him to come up. I mean, you'll notice it's all centered around Va uh, uh, Luke Skywalker because then let's jump to The Last Jedi. Um, that The story yeah. of Luke is one of my favorite st stories. Like, and I know The Last Jedi is very, very divisive, but it hit yeah. every right moment for me that Luke gave me permission again that he could save the galaxy years ago. Save the galaxy. Try to do it again. Be, be, be good. Be true. Train your nephew. See the darkness in him and have that failing moment that he actually runs away. It gave... Yeah. It gave heroes again permission to that you, it's okay to fail. Yoda comes back again and goes, "Yeah, that's another lesson for you, dude." Um, and then he comes back and does the greatest Jedi move of all time, projecting himself across the galaxy. Wow! Just to give him enough time to escape, like Obi Wan did in A New Hope. Oh. I mean, come on! It's just, it's just there's there's a wonderful, wonderful thing going on there with the the, the story of Luke Skywalker. I have those posters. I mean, it's. Yeah, it's like mm -hmm. his, his lowest, and then his and his redemption is highest. Our you viewers' know? comments are loving your posters, by the way. Oh, I love those posters. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I found them on Etsy. Oh, um, so yes, you know, sure. Empire Strikes Back, Last Jedi. Put a search in Etsy, and these and these wonderful artists. These are these are you know independent artists. I uh, wish I had them off the top of my head, but I don't. Yeah, the one that's right next to you that you're kind of leaning, leaning a little, that one with, yeah, with all the, the at mm -hmm. Oh, it's beautiful. Luke, I mean, I mean ah, yeah. that gave me chills. The of Luke against yeah. all of them is awesome. And yeah. and it's it, the beauty of him, like, commenting at the beginning, what are you going to, want me to take on the whole First Order? I mean, that the legend of Luke Skywalker has gotten out of control, everybody. Listen. I can't just go step out in front of the entire first order and, and, and destroy it. <laughs> or can I, you know, because, because, because then Luke realizes, wait, I can, yes. there's a way to do this. And it's going to take every last inch of my life to do it. Yeah. And I think that is beautiful. It's beautiful. And I, and I think that it does come around again in rise of Skywalker that a lot of people think that JJ was like, ah, if you Ryan shot, no, he throws no. the lightsaber and he catches it again because Luke came back around. That's not a F you last Jedi. That's a, that's an arc move. That's a move with Luke. And Luke even says, he's like, what are you doing? I love that. I, I love that. It hits me right. If it doesn't yeah. hit other people, then I know there are some prequel movies that are pretty damn cool. You know, yeah. it's like, that's what I love about star Wars is that we're all yeah. together. We can all love something from a star Wars movie. Yeah. And you can still consider your fan, you, yourself a fan, even if you don't like certain parts of the certain movies. That doesn't right. make you part of a fan, you know? Yeah. At all. So, what a great question, by the way. Thank you. I yeah. went off 
on, <laughs> on, on Luke Skywalker. And Clone Wars is usually my favorite moments. Yoda going and learning about the Sith and the dark side and going to Dagobah and having a vision of Darth Bane. Mark Hamill is the voice. Um, that Those are some great moments in the Clone Wars um, uh, episodes. Yeah. I, I love the episodes with the father, the son, and the daughter. Um, oh, God, yes. Yeah, that's great. Um, what were some of your favorite moments? Probably the dark Ahsoka episodes. Oh, that, yeah. yeah those, those, those really stand out for me. And, of course, the final four episodes of season seven. Oh, yeah, those were those were some of the best. Absolutely. Oh, and, you know, one of the things that I love about um, Clone Wars is when they have those moments that link directly into the movies, even if they're oh, part yeah. you did not personally like mm -hmm. still having that link, having that connection just makes this world that you thought you knew even bigger. Mm -hmm. Now, more details now that you know that there are say, the same. This is going on at the same time that something else is going on. Mm -hmm. Right. Just, Expanding that universe and making it more deep and more rich. I love. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Jack Robbins in the chat talking about like order 66 when Ahsoka's during that moment where you see yeah. it from that other side. Yes. Mm. Yeah. So good. Huh. David, David writes a uh, zoom yoga, Riley, just an idea <laughs> for me or for, <laughs> am I out of shape? I am. Yeah. Um, Maybe yeah. Julie, for, for, for Julie channel wine oh, and yoga wine and yoga i mean that that works for me i mean we are doing a new show on my youtube channel um wine and a movie um uh, oh, yeah so it's gonna be funny. good wine great movie or good wine horror movie good wine yeah. star wars movie julie and i are gonna we're gonna pop a bottle of our wine from our fridge and we're gonna talk about it and we're gonna just commentate along with the movie and, and we want you guys to join us. You know, we'll have guests. You guys, the movie couple joins us and watches one time and you know, oh, yeah. friends coming around and, and I'll tell you the wine we're getting and you guys can go out and get it. We can do a little tasting. Movies and wine. Movies and wine. Movies and wine. Yeah. Good wine, good wine, great movie. Mm -hmm. Good wine, great movie. Yeah. And uh, we're also now in the spooky, spooky season of October. Riley's other favorite thing other than Star Wars. Yeah, we're going to be launching that thing with a horror movie, I'm sure. So, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, oh, what yeah. Do you think of all the all the horror movies that are coming out because they have the whole Welcome to Blumhouse where there's four different yeah. films that are coming very, very soon on Amazon Prime, I think it was, or Netflix. Right. It was Amazon. I think it's Amazon, yeah. I think it's Amazon. Those look absolutely amazing. And we just yesterday got a trailer for the updated version of The Witches. Did you right? Remember? Yeah, I saw the witches trailer. I liked it a lot. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm a fan of the original. I only saw the original for the first time this year, actually. I think. Oh I know that one missed me. That one missed me, and it's weird that it did because it's Henson. Um yeah. and I, I I thought I thought the original was pretty charming, if not a little dated, but you know, that's like Goonies, yeah. you know, for me. And I grew up with Goonies and it looks great as it did in you know back in the day but so this new one though this trailer looks great it looks like it's it has the the fun of the first one a little bit dark there too which i like and um i mean zemeckis and Anne hathaway i'm fans of across the board and and octavia spencer being in it as well as the as the as the the heart of the film yes um is that is that grandmother and, 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 and grandson story. Mm -hmm. And I really was taken by the beginning of that. They, they put some emphasis on that and then it got really weird with the witches. So it looks good. Yeah. And I think that's, yeah, you're right. One of the most important parts of that movie is the relationship between the grandmother and the grandson. Yeah. And I think it's the grandmother, right? Am I right on that? Or yeah. yeah, not the mother. Okay. Right. Yeah. So what is it about horror for you that really pulls you to that genre? Yeah, I don't, I mean, you know, Clark Wolf, when she was on, on Thursday, we were talking on about that kind of, and especially in nowadays, I've watched a lot of horror movies. Um, we, and, and it's one of those genres that you don't need the season. You don't need like Christmas. You need like, you know, I need for it to be like around Thanksgiving before I put in a Christmas movie. Correct. You know, I can't just put in a Christmas movie in July, <laughs> but I can put I could put on a horror movie anytime I want. And there's something interesting about that classification of the genre that mm -hmm. then also comes over to October 
and October 1st rolls around and all of a sudden everybody's a horror movie fan. Everybody <laughs> changes their Twitter thing and every, and I'm like, God, where are all you horror fans when I'm doing camp blood or Collider nightmares or something where we need the, where we need the views. Where yeah. are you? You know? And, and but I love that. Finished and then it's, they all just, they just go away. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a genre that, um, can either be, you know, it's, 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 we, there's a lot of us that love it, but there's, I get questions all the time. Like, Hey, how do I get in? How, how are there some gateway horror films or this, but why do you like it? I love it because it looks, it's shitty outside right now, like across the board. It's a, it's a dumpster fire across the board and you can go into a horror movie and know that it's all fake and know that it's scary and you're going to be disappearing in that moment and that you could be watching like it or something yeah. Knowing that, well, it's garbage fire outside, but at least it's not, you know, every 27 years, a demon from space comes and eats children. <laughs> so you're like, okay, so I, I disappear in it. I also think it reminds me that you're alive. I think you get scared and you're like, oh yeah, right, right. Um, and I just, it's like, sometimes horror is just cool looking. I love Jason's iconic hockey mask. I love the shape. I love Michael Myers masks as he's in the closet behind Lori Strode and that shot oh, comes wow. in and it's a monster behind you. These are all the things I love. And it's communal too, because Julie and me, and I, I know the movie couple does is you put it in a horror movie and you're, it's awesome. Yeah. Lower the lights. You're holding on to each other. Get the so, dog. <laughs> in the dark. I love, I love what, yeah, it's, it's my favorite genre because it's just, it's the one that really makes you go, you know, and reminds you of a lot of things. Are you excited for, because I know you and Julie definitely watched the haunting of Hill house. Are you excited for? Oh, yeah. I can't wait for that. I know. Yeah. Talk about there's there's in the horror genre, there's jump scares. Yep. In Haunting of Hill House, it's the best jump scare utilized on film, <laughs> streaming, television, or otherwise. It like it is the greatest jump scare of all time in one of those episodes. I and I can't remember. I can't remember which episode. I didn't make it past episode. Oh, I don't remember what it was. I didn't finish, but now with Bly Manor coming out, and I know they're separate, even though the actors, some of the actors are back. Yeah, they're kind of doing that anthology feel, which yeah, I love. It's kind of like American Horror Story, but I, yeah. I actually chickened out. I usually don't chicken out of, but this is a series. It's not, you know, you sit in for two hours and you're done with the whole thing. Like you have to keep going. Uh, so I got to yeah. suck it up and and want and finish it. You'll, you'll, I mean, oh, Wendy, I know, I know the scares. Sometimes yeah. killer clowns from outer space in it last year. I get it. Um, but yeah, the, and Roxy, Wendy. Yeah. Oh God, Roxy. I know that was so fun. That was a year ago. Like we got the alert on um, that. It was about a year ago. Yeah, in September of all things, actually. That's true, and it was hot too. It was hot. Yeah. We have a uh, we have a fan question. Who's watching from Twitch from Stardew? Thank you very much. What is the worst horror movie under the world with werewolves? Uh, wait, what is worse horror movies underworld with wolves or and Dracula or Resident Evil with zombies and mutants <laughs> with rocket laughters? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I would say the I, I'm not a fan. I, I didn't really get into those Resident Evil ones i, I like the i like the underworld because of the werewolves and the vampires i, I it's kind of, i don't know i like that more than just because the the werewolves and the and the and the vampires usually have like kind of personality that comes with them like they're characters themselves in these movies and resident evil is you know mila jovovich and 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 a bunch of mindless zombies so you know i get more bang for my buck with underworld i also think that the first underworld movie had such a great so setup good. There was great acting, yeah. great lore that was being built and created. Now, what you personally think of what direction Underworld went, whether you liked it or not, it still started off with a huge, I thought it was a huge success. Oh, yeah. It when was. I saw Resident Evil for the first time, the very first one, I was very upset because I was a huge fan of the video game. And I'm like, this is nothing like the video game. <laughs> yeah. What's going on here? So it had that, you know, <laughs> the flaw of having to be compared to an to an existing IP. Right. Whereas Underworld was kind of like, hey, let's just create this world where there's this war going on between vampires and werewolves. Yeah. And I think so they had a little bit of a better start. Um, so, and I kind of, that's why I also, am, I, I personally liked Underworld yeah. a lot more than um, Resident Evil, but oh, I know yeah. 
people who are love the Resident Evil franchise. Oh yeah. Oh, they yeah. do. I mean, there's a reason why there's like eight of them or something. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it's like it's not for lack of people not going. So, yeah. Exactly. They keep making it because there is a fan base and, and, a, and a demand for it. Now we're getting like a whole new show. There's the, uh, the animated one, animated right. CGI, and then there is going to be a live action one. Crazy. As well, which is, I'm actually kind of into it. I'm, I'm very curious <laughs> to see. And same right. thing with games. I have a hard time playing the games because I just, I don't know. I get nervous. My thing, my hands get all sweaty and the remote. Like I just, I, Oh yeah. I'm playing one of those now every once in a while. It's, it's hard and scary. All right. Yeah. I'm excited for it's, I think it's coming out on a PS five. It's the resident evil village. Oh, okay. Ooh. Okay. Good. It yeah. I mean, good. any kind of horror video game I go nuts for. That's why my twit like that's why Twitch is one of my favorite things now because I'm just like I'm just playing horror movies, just playing horror games right now. And and it's really fun. Have you played Dead Space? Yeah, long oh. time ago. Oh that was a good one. Yeah, yeah that was a good that, one. That was a hard one for me to finish. Yeah. That was, that was a very, very scary uh sort of a sort of a game where mm -hmm. I, I just I chickened out. I had to play, you know, in the bright light during the day, and then at night I would be like, <laughs> <laughs> "Yeah, right." One game that I've been dying, the one horror game that I've been dying to play, um, but they only released it like at a set at, at um, one of the E threes. Mm -hmm. Is that um, Alien Isolation? Oh yeah, I have that too. Yo, yeah, that's good. And it's I'm, good. That is just. A brilliant idea. I loved the the idea of how to structure that. The whole goal is for you to get out. Yep, yep, yep. And yeah, it's how, it's, do, it's, how do you stay away from this alien? But you've played it a lot more. Yeah, I've been playing it, but then I I've been jumping around from. It's like I I rediscovered my gamer in me with Twitch, and I'm like catching up now. So like Star, Star Wars Squadrons is out. I'm like, oh, I'm playing that. Like Madden is out. I'm like, oh, I'm playing that right now. But I started playing Alien Isolation and I do I do just like straight horror Twitch streams on Wednesdays usually with my Riley's Camp Blood where I'll just play horror and I'll play that Alien Isolation. It's like I scream. <laughs> that thing. Because you're like trying to like I'll play the challenge too. I can't even get past this mother effing alien, man. You go. I mean, I'm like just I'm like. Okay, I think I got here. And then, and then you're just, I'm like, what the? This alien knows everything I'm doing when, I, when I'm when i just walking around. So it's it's really fun. You have to like really get in there and get good. So And Confused oh. has got a really good play. I would love. No, 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 no. Do it, Riley. No. Put Josh oh, Makuga on it. I know, Josh. It's so funny. Makuga and I are like, it's, it's for the video games. I. I, it, it gets me. It gets me. What was I doing? It was like Friday the 13th too. You know, some of, I think so, I saw somebody in here think you actually think I'm good at Friday the 13th. I really appreciate that. Um, because most of the time I'm running. Oh, if I get all of a sudden, if I'm Jason in that Friday the 13th game, I mean, usually Julie's with me and we're, we've had maybe too much wine at that point, but <laughs> that's besides the point, um, by that point, Julie's calling Jason a bag of rocks going, this guy can't walk any faster. And I'm like, I know it's like, <laughs> I, it's, it's like all these survivors. Like I get a couple of these kids, you know, just grab them and kill them and whatnot. But most of the time I'm like, it's really hard. But then when I'm the counselor, oh. that's when it's really fun. Yeah. I'm scared. I'm screaming the, the, the music. I mean, if it's alien isolation, Oh Jesus. It's they're, they're really fun. It's like, you know, you have to move from your safety hiding room or safe room in order to progress the story forward, but you just don't want to look around that corner because then all of a sudden you don't know how to react and you're just hitting all the buttons. Oh. <laughs> and that's, and I'm really bad at like really getting to know the games. I get very impatient. I just want to go and press buttons. And so I'm like, maybe that's because I'm older now, I guess. But yeah, sometimes I'm just like, oh, sh what do I do? What do I do? And I just press all these buttons and then I have to run from one cabin to the other cabin and you hear Jason in the woods. Yeah. Good luck with that folks. You just hear, you're like, it's coming. And you yeah, have right? the round sound or your headphones on, you know, noise. Oh yeah. Completely. Noise. Yeah. The headphones are really, really a new deal for me too on that. It, it does add a, a, a next level thing. 
Does Julie ever, ever mess with you when she knows you're really playing and she, you got the headphones on and you're sort of like in your blinders because you're so into the game and she comes in and just poke you with a feather or something? She should. <laughs> she really she really should actually do that. I, I think because... I, I think mostly because, I mean, when I'm playing video games, she's yelling at me to get out of my cave. So <laughs> I think that this would be a good way to do it is that if she starts coming in and effing with me, I think that's, she's watching right now. So she's probably she getting a, she put a, like a crazy <laughs> costume on dress up Leia as some sort of crazy and send her in and just be like, go get dad, go. <laughs> what is yeah, it? Yeah. Yeah. Spider costume that you can put it's on the your Demogorgon dog. Demogorgon the Demogorgon costume. The Demogorgon costume, and then just send her in there, and you're like, "Hi, but oh my god!" <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, I, I just pulled out all the the Halloween decorations. Like we went real early this year, and uh, <laughs> that's me, Julie. Don't do that. <laughs> no, no, no. We need to no spice it up. Come on, do that. Um, because then you can get her back. See, that's where I was going. I pulled out. I pulled out all the decorations, and I put on the um. I put on the, the Halloween mask at one point and just looked in the shower. Don't do that, folks. Don't do that. That gets it. That'll get that. That got her real bad. Um, and so oh. she she <laughs> we like to scare each other. And then I came out. I had a scream costume. I put it on in the other room while she was decorating. I come out. She looks at me and goes, eh, didn't get her. Thought I was going to get my dog who's as scared of her own shadow. And she saw me and just went. Hey, ghost face just ran right up to me. So we're fine. <laughs> oh, so Sometimes those flubs are the best though. They to are. You build up this anticipation. This is what's going to happen. And then it's a complete um, misdirection. And yeah. everyone's like, oh, hey, how's it going? Right. Yeah. It's hysterical. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Riley, it's been so fun catching up with you. Oh, uh, yeah. Thank you. You're so welcome. Thank you for coming on. You can uh, catch Riley on his YouTube channel. You can catch Riley on Twitch. And of course, you can catch Riley on uh, October 10th, which is next Saturday. You can watch him and Ken Opsock and all the people that I, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't even know, but you can go ahead and watch the We're show. on Monday. Come, yeah. come to my, yeah, come to Riley's Cantina on Monday at 6 p.m. on the Pacific side on my YouTube channel. I'll be doing the big announcement of the, the whole lineup then. That's so exciting. Oh my gosh, I can't wait. I'm really, 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 really excited for you. I think you're oh, doing thank you. all the great things. Your content are super awesome. And also your Patreon. Uh, we didn't get to talk about it too much. And I know it's we're at the end of the show, but sure. uh, it's like a great creative space for writers, whether they're experienced or they're brand new. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, and by the way, Noah, yes, go. The Nightmare on Elm Street movies are rad. Watch part one, part three, and A New Nightmare. You're welcome. And they're happy awesome. birthday, Noah. And happy birthday, Noah. Nice. Yeah. Happy birthday. Um, yeah, yeah. Go get some uh, Nightmare on Elm Street birthday cake. Um, and uh, sorry, what was the question? Uh, you, uh, I missed what I was saying. Sorry, I was saying something to Noah. <laughs> the Patreon for writers. Oh, yeah, my Patreon. Yeah, we do. I have a, a tier. It's a $10 tier, but every month we do a writer's room. And so it's really turned into something very, very special over at Patreon, a big creative community that we do. We talk a lot about movies, sure. But on the different tiers, we have development exec where we sit in, we talk about movies, we talk about scripts I'm working on, talk about my YouTube channel. It's kind of a creative place. Like you guys are my development execs. We have a writer's room every month. We have 10 pages. We share each other's pages. And then the last Saturday of every month, we get together and we have this big three-hour creative meeting on our pages. Um, so a lot of that kind of stuff on, on my Patreon page and a lot of one-on-one -on -one hanging out um, in the, in, in rooms together, zoom meetings. And every Tuesday, we also do uh schmodown hangs, yeah. we do schmodown scrimmages with you guys every Tuesday. That's, that's on my Patreon page. So it's a lot of fun over there. If you guys want to check it out. Yeah. Go check out what everything that Riley is doing on Instagram, thanks, Twitter, guys. all the good stuff. Thank you so much for coming on, hang out with us, Riley. Oh, thanks guys. Good seeing you both. <laughs> oh, been too long. Yeah, I know. We'll do this again soon. I promise. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. Thank you, everybody, for watching. We're going to go ahead and let Riley go, and we will see you guys on Tuesday or Thursday. <laughs> One of those <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye. Yay.